Hi, Jeff Setzer from GSC here. Just want to give you a little bit of a refresher on some things that I consider to be lost Solberg's lore, things that many of us who have been veterans and using it for a long time might take for granted, but not everyone knows about. So this is going to be kind of a series of different types of videos um, encompassing many aspects of Solberg's from the system administration to end user tips and tricks and different methods to use maybe some forgotten tools and it's going to be a lot of fun so let's go ahead and get started many people use weldments to create a variety of structure models inside of SOLIDWORKS let's take a look at a situation like this where we have essentially sort of a model of a building space uh, the walls and the floor and the overhang in red. And we also have a separate body that represents a duct that runs along the corner. And we want to add in some I-beams to um, add to the structure. If you're interested in learning about how to do weldments, there's training that we have at GSC. There's online stuff as well. MySolidWorks.com is a great resource, etc. But just to kind of, you know, fast forward here, you know, I have a sketch in the shape of an H, was kind of laying out where I want my I beams to go, uh, right on coming on top and hanging down. And then we go ahead and add in our structural member, right? This is our, um, in this case, we're doing C channel and we're doing one direction. And so that's going to have some different situations where we want to do our trimming. So when you're doing structural members and weldments, we do have a really capable trim tool, which works really well um, in situations where you have, you know, two structural members coming together. So I want to trim this guy and I'm going to use this body here because I want to cope it out. And do I want to just, I'll just go straight instead of doing the corners there like that. And I could add a well gap or not. We'll add that trim there. So now we have that trimmed out the way we want. This side is coming up flat, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. And then if I want to trim, however, to um, you know these other ends out here, well, trim extend, body to be trimmed, this and this and then in terms of a trimming boundary if it's a flat face like it is in this back wall here i can use the face or plane right there and then i can determine what pieces i want to keep or get rid of so i want those schnibbles on the outside i want to discard those guys okay so that's going to trim to the inside planar face and that'll work just fine with the trim extend tool in weldments However, when I have a situation like this where I'm actually going to have to cope out from the top wall here down and also to notch this out for this uh, duct there, if I do the trim extend command and these again are my bodies that I want to trim, and in this case, I'm not using a face or a plane, I'm going to be using the body, so I want to use this body here and this body, okay, if I pick this guy, it's not eligible. Only bodies created by weld member features can be used when you're talking about a body trim. So this is not a weld feature, nor is this guy. So I can't use that. So what often people end up doing is they end up doing sketches and cutting it out manually, but there is a much better way. It's almost as easy as using the trim extend command in weldments and that command is the indent command which you may have seen some other videos i've done i think the indent command is one of the most useful and most underused general modeling commands in solidworks you can find it in your feature a command manager tab if you've added it there if you haven't you can just hit your s key and start typing in indent and it will find it for you and you can find it in your interface. You can execute right here. You can drag and drop it onto wherever you want it to go, like I have it right here. 
So the way the indent command works, it's gonna work on one target body at a time. So I will need to do this command twice, one for each of these pieces here. So I'll go ahead and this is my target body and then my tool body region, and I'm gonna say I wanna keep my selection that I have here. And the tool body region is going to be this piece right here and this piece right here. Now, nothing's really gonna happen. Again, usually people are thinking about this as indenting, kind of putting your thumb into a thin wall part and kind of like squeezing out the indentation there. But again, super useful, generally speaking, with the indent command is by using the cut option. Now it's gonna cut with whatever gap I want. In my case, I'll say zero, but this could be a gap I'd specify. I'll go all along the indent. So again, kind of like a well gap, but you're not worrying about well, you're worried about clearance. Okay, so I put in, you know, a quarter inch or whatever I want. And then I say, okay. And then now that's indented. So if I do the same command again, hit enter as a tip to repeat your last command in SOLIDWORKS in general. Target body is this. Tool body region is gonna be here. And that body there, I'm gonna do a cut with them. You see the kind of the preview there. Don't need a clearance in my case, and there we have it. So, I mean, I've now indented and cut that out. Now, the, the issue is if I hide using my tab key a couple of these pieces, okay, yeah, I have those cut out but I also have these bodies just laying out there because the indent command just with the cut will leave those pieces out. So that's really simple. I can just simply right click on there and with the body, just delete, delete that body, delete that body, and we're good to go. So you can see how the indent command actually coped that out just the way I wanted to and I can use the shift uh, tab command to bring back my other bodies there back to visible and there we have it a nice easy way to trim structural members to non-structural members from a body standpoint when it's not more than just a simple planar situation can't use the regular trim extend command between a structural member and a non-structural member but if it's not planar but you can use the indent command with the cut option to make this stuff happen quite easily. So I hope you learned a little something new about the tool that we all know and love. SOLIDWORKS has all kinds of depth of functionality and it's hard to remember all of it. So that's why I'm putting this series together. And until next time, keep up with us at www.gsc-3d.com.